All right, welcome to the latest episode of the Coleman Power Organic Fitness Podcast. I have, sometimes I most certainly would put him into the category of my new best friend, most certainly Edgar yeah. Kirby from County Waterford, the two of us blue and white fans, to be sure, to be sure. And he is most certainly a health and enthusiastic fitness and health coach, getting people to cook more healthy meals, to lose weight in a healthy way. Edgar, welcome to the show. Coleman, an introduction and a half. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're super welcome. I suppose, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. And I know uh, I've mentioned the word influencer there. And for the most part, that's what you were put into the category of. You're literally influencing people for the better. But I want you to tell people what your page is about, what you do on a regular basis, and that uh, we can kind of start off from there. Absolutely. So I suppose my main focus is really helping people eat well in quite a creative way so just making healthier recipes that people actually want to eat rather than you know living on a diet that brings absolute misery on a daily basis i just want people to eat really really well feel good and be full of good positive energy too and the page on a whole is it's or just the i suppose the, the influencing that i do is just about helping people to live healthier, live longer, and be happy while they're doing it too. Yeah. Right. Tell people a little bit about your own backstory. I know you have a weight loss journey that I want to further expand on. And um, yeah, start off with, I suppose, the realisation of where were you even five years ago? Mm. So our family went through a lot of grief over kind of a three-year period. We lost our grandmother, our mother, and my sister, Becky. And that put me into like a really, really dark place. And I suppose I turned to food. In a way, I'm kind of thankful that it was food that I turned to for self-comfort and nothing more kind of sinister. But in saying that, the food was also slowly but surely destroying my mental health, my physical well-being, you know. So while it may not be as aggressive as something like drugs or alcohol, food has a really, really poor effect on you when you are not utilizing it correctly. Um, I got up to 22 plus stone at one point at my heaviest. And I'm now sitting around 13 and a half stone and have been with over a year. Um, It was kind of very much about relearning that full relationship with food. And that takes a lot of work and a lot of um, honesty and self-accountability too, I think. You know, you get into this rut on and habit almost of just habitually eating because you're not facing the emotions that are coming up for you that you really need to be dealing with. And I think Ireland, if I may mass generalize for a moment, is very much about sweeping stuff under the carpet and just getting on with it and not kind of going, OK, we need to actually deal with this problem that's going on, you know. Yeah, right. And why do you think that is so? Do you know what I mean? Is it something that's in, in maybe our heritage or it's something that it's because it's the two of us being males that we should be tall, we should be strong, we should be confident and we're the, the leaders of this, I suppose, scenario? Mm. I think now it has gotten a lot better uh, in my own experience and even talking with people online. But... Again, it would have been that very, especially for men, it's that very macho thing of not talking about it, getting on with things and just kind of, you know, shoving it down because your emotions aren't that important. You know, when in reality, they're probably the most important thing that we can take power over and to get control of. Because even in my own situation, when I took the power back from those emotions ruling my life, that was when I was able to come back into myself, a newer, better version. Um, Because if you don't deal with these things that are coming up, it's just going to eventually eat you alive until you are a shell of who you previously were, you know? Edgar, tell me, I don't want to pin out this point. What what was the turning point that you kind of said, I have enough, I don't feel well physically, I don't, mentally, I don't look and feel as well as I'd like to be. And what was the kind of, the penny the drop that said, now I got to change. Or did you meet somebody? Or was someone that you saw online? Do you, are you influenced by somebody else? Yeah, I think that, you know, I was sick of kind of getting up every day, having the same day. It was that Groundhog Day. I was, you know, I was really, really clever. I, I was suffering a lot with obviously the mental health side of things at that point too, going through so much grief. And I had quite a tumultuous childhood as well. So I think all of that kind of combined, it didn't really hit me 
till like into literally my 30s. That's how far and how long I had kind of pushed it down for. And then when the grief hit in, that's when I really turned to food. Um, I think that the turning point was just buying clothes that were getting into the three and four XL range. Like I'd be really proud of my appearance. I love looking good. I love, you know, yeah. um, and obviously that isn't the be all and end all, but at the end of the day, you want to feel confident in yourself. So that was a huge thing for me. I was like, I kind of just looked at the clothes one day and went, what the actual has happened here? How have I let myself get to this point, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you can often find yourself self-soothing with, you know, videos you see online. A lot of this is creeping up recently as well with the body positivity movement. Right now, the body positivity movement on a whole is really, really good. It's a good thing, but... Not when it is basically promoting obesity as healthy. I'm sorry. It is just, you know, but even myself, I got to the point where I was like, oh God, maybe it is okay to be this size. When in reality, I couldn't run down the road. I was so unhealthy, like both physically and mentally. It has such a huge impact uh, on you. So it was just time to change. So I got myself much like people coming to you or I, I got myself a personal trainer um, and got it all in hand. And nothing actually threw me off course during that whole period. I was so honest. I was really, really regimental, but it was all manageable and easy. And I was dropping every week until I got to the point where I'm at now. And I, I'm with a local gym here, move into Garvin, fantastic facilities. Um, I'm there five, six days a week. I absolutely love it. I joined a running group here. Um, so it's great just to be so full of energy, life, and to actually, you know, want to really live again. Yeah. Is there something that's different that you've changed? Is it the group of people? Is it more so your shopping habits? Or is there anything else in between? What's the thing that you would tell people, you need to do this. This will help you. Hmm. That's really interesting, actually. I like that, that, that you said group of people there. That, that was a big a big change. I have almost converted from old groups of friends to a totally new group because often it is the people that you surround yourself with as well that allow these habits to kind of, you know, multiply. So that's a really, really good point. It's important who you're surrounding yourself with and who you're sharing your energy with and who you're investing in as well. For the basics, I was just... For me, shopping is a huge thing. Be really, really organized with your shopping. If you can't have certain things in the house because you're too tempted by them, I couldn't buy multi-packs of bars or crisps or whatever for so long. I was like, they were like crack, okay? So I was like, they're staying out of the house. <laughs> and if I wanted them, I would go walk to the supermarket or the shop, get the single bar and enjoy that instead of inhaling six of them. You know? <laughs> yeah, very good. Because that is the temptation. When we have a sweet treat, whether it's a biscuit or chocolate or cake, and for the most part, what happens is if it's there, it's like literally I'm gonna say the the gauntlet. We go straight over to it. Yeah. We don't have one biscuit, we have the whole shag and packet. Or the yeah, it's like a little voice out in the press going, Come out to me, come out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's good. You see, you're putting in rules in place. You're changing up your lifestyle, which now is in a much healthier one. And you're consistent. That's what's going to help you. It's stepping stones that came you out of there. You didn't lose the weight all in, in relation to either a couple of weeks. And again, it's coming off you steadily. And now you're at a point where you're just looking to improve and physically stay as healthy and as energetic and positive. I'm just going to say, geez, you're looking great as well. I know a lot of listeners will already um, uh, listen to it. But the thing is, this man is literally, again, someone who is living and breathing it. He's eating it and he's a waterman, man. And that's why I like him a hell of a lot more. <laughs> Up the day, <laughs> <laughs> oh, But man. you're so right in saying that. It really is those little steps that add up in the long run. And often, like in a society where we want everything now, people just kind of need to give it time, need to give it weeks, if not months, to get to their goal, you know? People want things instantaneously, and if it's not going their way, kind of throw their toys out at the pram and go, I'm giving up too quickly. You know, if you can just get past that point, even struggles, even if the scales isn't moving for two or three weeks, just keep at it. That's the most important thing. 
Yeah, very, very key. And the things that I know you work with clients um, online, firstly, to mention even that you also are um, a very good, most certainly educational dancer. And uh, in the near future, in the near future, in the future, uh, when I most sort of get married, I will most certainly maybe touch and base with yourself because I don't know that I have the moves just yet. <laughs> I've seen you but bu- I've seen you busting a few moves now, Coleman. <laughs> yeah, but that's more so I gotta say that's more so freestyle if anything. There's no instruction to it. Um it's more so quite rigid. I did strictly come dancing. I did strictly come dancing. Now see, you're already ahead. <laughs> Am I ahead? <laughs> Are you gonna see me? I was quite robot like. Do you know what I mean? It was like Peter Crouch there moving left and right. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything I'm going to say that um that a lot of your clients either online or in person struggle with in itself and that's quite in the majority of the people that are uh, struggling with this specific point do you know the biggest thing that is kind of a life changer for the majority of them I have some with me now since January the biggest thing was planning they hadn't a clue where to even begin so breaking down that planning and pouring that into everything you're doing from your exercise to your diet, to your water, to your nutrition goals, to whatever it may be, to work. You know, it's really important to get a good, solid plan in place. I'm the kind of person, if I'm freewheeling stuff, things don't get done. I am like list, 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 almost military in style. And saying the satisfaction of just ticking off that little task done is, you know, stunning. Yeah. So goal setting and having a plan because you don't have a plan, you do things at random. You do things at random, you get a random result. And loads of people don't realize that just like your job, you start at a certain time, you take a break at a certain time, you go again at a certain time and you finish at a certain time and things get done. If you didn't, your boss or if you're self-employed, it would just be higgledy-piggledy and the whole yeah. business or your model would not work. Absolutely. I suppose in a way I was really lucky because I have performing arts school here with over a decade and even during all of that time, I was able to keep that all going. And, you know, nobody had a clue, but I was really, like, on it. So that kind of helped, I suppose, with the weight loss as well, because the planning and, and that kind of goal setting was already in place. But that's where I would start. Get your goals in place first. And be really, really detailed and clear with it as well. Yeah. You're someone that's a major, I'm going to say, um, home cooker of simple, healthy meals, like, like I don't watch a, people's content that much, like because I'm going in, putting out what I've I've put in, and going out and doing whatever I have to do. But you you get me, you have me, and I, I'm I'm giving out to people. Don't be scrolling. I'm not, I don't scroll that much. But I'm like, I wonder what he's cooking today. We we'll have a look at this. <laughs> but you got me. <laughs> it's great to it's just great to be able to say you know and people are surprised as well by what you can come up with using you know better ingredients and you know with, with higher protein higher fiber good healthy fat it's really you know with a little bit of creativity you really can get to a point where you're just enjoying a new kind of taste range and often it's better to be honest you know and i wouldn't ever and i i, I cringe when i see some of the lower calorie recipes online because you just know that they taste like well look the dirt to the ground would taste better but uh it's important that taste is really important really really important for longevity as well See, right uh, tell me just even a typical day of i'm going to say yourself um just what we'd have for breakfast what would you have for lunch and what we have for dinner and or if there are any snacks just to fill people in that it's not just cardboard that we're eating or it's not uh pure muck or soil as we say <laughs> so i suppose i love Eggs are great in the morning. I love oh, eggs. Oh my God, I love eating. Oh my God, I like literally, I have think of about a hundred recipes with eggs right now on the page. So literally, eggs are my go-to, whatever which way you want them, you know, get in some form of carb. Love sourdough bread. Really, really lovely. Good for the gut. Um, get in some bit of fruit or something in the morning or even a protein yogurt or a bit of Greek yogurt. Then the afternoon, I like to have either a bit of fish, some form of fish, a bit of veg, um, I keep it quite light because usually I'm teaching in the evenings or some form of activity on that I'm, that I'm going off, you know. Then the evenings, if I want something kind of comforty, lovely, I'll do like a low-fat, high-protein kind of taco mints or bolognese or something like that. Or, I mean, I, I include absolutely everything. Really. I do beautiful carbonara. I do lovely fish pie. I But it's all just done in a really, really clever little way, you know. Snacks-wise, I tend to just lean on a protein bar or, two or a protein shake or something along those lines just to hit up those those protein goals each day, you know? Yeah. 
No, but what you're doing is you're making simple meals, right? You're making them healthy. For the most part, they're single ingredient meals and you're making a video for people to follow step by step. What you're also doing is you're educational and you're humor, humorous. And as, as opposed to a business owner and someone who's into marketing, that's very important. You can be informative mm. or entertaining. Or if you're both, that means you're very good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> that, was my, take the compliment. <laughs> that was my compliment to you on this podcast. And- but I have to say, Coleman, because I think I started following you during the, those dark times of the global panini. Um, and your page was so positive and so lovely and so light on there and really, really inspirational too. And that also fed into my own kind of going, oh my God, I need to change. And obviously I have your book. Fantastic. If you don't have this man's book, please purchase it immediately, if not sooner. But it is fantastic. Really, really straightforward education. And actually pra- helpful in a practical way, you know? That's really, really important. Yeah. I know you're doing different events, you see, because, like, to tell most certainly the likes of, I'm going to say, the listeners or the viewers, like, what your social media platforms are, like, and how many roughly followers that you're getting and you're moving on to the different, I'm going to say, events and that are coming up very, very soon. We'll touch on those. Yeah, so I suppose the, so the, I'm kind of bigger over on TikTok. That'd be kind of my biggest platform. We're hitting nearly 190,000 over there now. Um, Instagram have got getting a good push recently. I've got some lovely friends on there actually that I'm doing an event with in July, uh, Laurie Lovey and Audrey. So we're doing a big kind of summer blowout, uh, summer celebration in the Silver Springs Hotel on July 5th. A bit of comedy, a bit of entertainment, a good old party, which is often needed too. Good balance, you know. Um, so yeah, Instagram and TikTok and they're both Edgar Kirby. Definitely. Right, and just to touch on a little bit, I suppose, about what you're doing in relation to your exercise, right? Foods are one side of it. You're cooking A1 yeah. or meals. And I'm sure that you even have recipe books available. Is there an e-cookbook or is that part of a package that you provide? Yeah, so in terms of, the, I'm actually mid working on my first uh, e-book cookbook. Eat so I'm delighted. Eat your lovely. Yeah, so that's it's all you certainly did. <laughs> I, uh, I have a breakfast cookbook coming out first and I'm going to follow on there with lunches and dinners. Um, so people can pick and choose what they want to use, you know. Um, that's kind of the big project at the moment. Uh, in terms of then, obviously I'm working away with clients since January, which is fantastic. And they're getting great with those. And the big thing again is the mindset. It's a huge shift in mindset. Even within the first four to six weeks, you're seeing these big flips, you know. It's amazing when people kind of go, oh, I can actually do this, you know. Once it's, once it's slow and steady. So steady is really, really important. Even like the recipes that I share, I make sure that each step is explained. Why are you doing this? Why is that included? You know, I think in a fast world, we need to just slow down a little bit and appreciate things a little bit more. I love that. Like sometimes I love that fact that you have to mention that in this podcast, right? Sometimes we need to slow down if we want to speed up. But we live in a world where we want to go 90 every single day and I would fall into that category too. I want to do as many things yeah. as we can. And yeah. the whole thing about it is like, we can't always go at full throttle. Sometimes we have to slow down. Sometimes we even have to go in reverse or the car breaks down. Yeah. And we literally then have to pick ourselves back up. But that's that key point of, right? You are working with clients since the likes of January. It's not a quick fix. It's literally the stepping stones. It's the consistency. And us touching on this next point about like your training and or what you recommend to others and or exercise and anything else in between. Yeah, so I started off with a personal trainer and I went three days a week. I think it was only for about 30 minutes a session. And I would go off walking then four or five days a week, getting the minimum 10,000 steps. Walking is the best single exercise you can do. Honest, I, if you do nothing else, get the runners on and get out the door immediately. And um, really, really important. Now I've upped it a huge amount. I'm, I'm in the gym five or six days a week. So I do like push, pull, legs kind of split. And I'm out with a running group then three nights a week. Now that's just starting off. So it's a couch to 5K because I really want to get the cardio up more. Do you know what I mean? Uh, just to complement everything else. And then, of course, I teach dancing uh, year round until the end of June. And we have a little break then till September. 
Yeah, you're extremely active, right? That's the key thing. You're moving, you're walking. Even on the days where you're going, quote unquote, for a treat, you're walking to the shop and you're walking yeah. from the shop. Yeah. So that's one of those things that I would try and encourage people to do. If there's something that's a bit, I'm going to say, naughty or whatever you want to call it, a bit bad, you want to put that into that category, yeah. all right? You are literally calling it the balance of I'm exercising, I'm training on that day. Right, I'm eating healthy the majority of the time, and I'm going for that. I'm going out for that meal. I'm having that beverage. I'm meeting up with Coleman, and we're having a drink, and we're doing whatever because that's what kind of makes it fit in. There's no one perfect, not even me. The whole idea of it is, I would have a drink on occasion, and whether it's a wedding, whether it's a, a birthday, or it's an anniversary, or whatever it may be. The thing is, it's what you're doing the majority of the time, fitting in the steps, walking it's free. You do it anywhere in the world. Yeah, that's- exactly cost you nothing and then you hear oh cold man it's raining do you know what I mean get a brolly get it done <laughs> yeah. you get on a treadmill get yourself going like even, even on YouTube you can do these walking videos it's, 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 oh, no what, what does that look like <laughs> it's very funny you're like <laughs> oh, let's go I actually have never seen that myself <laughs> You'll have to, you'll have to, you'll have to have a search. You'll, you'll get a good laugh off. I'll, I'll actually even do a video on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to get into like what was this? Was the the point where you started cooking your own meals? And I suppose that is that's a huge part of it because you cannot out train a bad diet. And I know you're a major fan of cooking. Like what was yeah. the point where you said right? It was this cookbook. It was that point where. I saw him or saw her and then now I wanted to encourage myself to do that because I know the benefits are massive. See, the thing is, right, I was a fantastic cook. I grew up in a farm. So you know how busy farms get, right? They get so busy during the season when like shearing season or lambing season or whatever. You have loads of extra people in the house. So I was literally in the kitchen age 11, 12, cooking, full-blown cooking. Um, and I just loved it from that moment. You know, I knew that, geez, this is great. I'd love to do something with this. I knew I didn't want to go and be a chef or whatever like that. Mm. But I just loved it. And I was really, really good at cooking. That was part of the problem. My meals were very luxurious, full of the calories. <laughs> but then I said, there was no great kind of epiphany or anything that happened in terms of the cooking. It was just, and luckily, I kind of had so much experience with it that I was clever enough to be able to navigate and make it still tasty, but just healthier. Um. It was just kind of like, you you either do this now or it's never going to happen. You know, you need to like cop onto yourself and get things in order across the board, you know? Very good. Well, right, I'll even further twist the question. Where was the point that you improved on your nutrition knowledge? Because you already said since the age of 11, you have it in your background of cooking. Where and what, what was the point that you found out that, oh, this is how you make a more nutritious meal. Because I do remember myself when I went to Australia was the kind of the point where I moved out of home, I was 23. And then I was like, oh, so this is actually what they call a balanced meal. Didn't know that. Found it on YouTube. How do you cook a stir fry? Well, really for the most part, you just chop vegetables and put it in and put it in whatever sauce you like. That's kind of a yes. stir fry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and people are like, ah, oh, come on, it must be more complicated than that. It's not. You literally, I'm lucky enough to have a frying pan here. You literally grab the <laughs> frying pan. <laughs> you grab, oh, why, yeah. why am I not surprised that you have a random frying pan? <laughs> and there's like fruits and vegetables as well. All the fish. I did too many videos. That's why I'm on this desk here. <laughs> yeah, I can bring them in. Um, as so, rough, um, I suppose um, the, you know what? It didn't really clock until like maybe three, four years ago. When you kind of go, when you actually look at it and go, oh, all right, okay, I, I'm actually supposed to be eating these things for a reason, you know? And now, just to jump ahead, I eat very much thinking about my future. I think about it like a pension. Same with the exercise. You're investing in your body. You're making it strong so that it will work for you throughout your entire life. It's not just to look hot. It's not just whatever, which is important, obviously. But, you know... It's not just about that, and uh, it's really, really important. (laughs) (laughs) For anybody who's wondering, Colin is pulling faces on the camera. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. And that's why why we get on so well. We have the same banter. We have the same message in itself. And that's one of those things that is, I suppose, important for more more people to know. And you did touch on it. It's the fact that maybe it will get you started if you want to literally, I'm going to say, be that healthier version of yourself. If you want to look good naked, if you want to attract a boyfriend or a girlfriend or anyone else in between, that can be the starting point. Absolutely. Everything, you know, 
we're, we're, we are all different individual people and what's important to me may not be important to you. So it's really important to, again, just consider yourself in all of this because it's, that's what it's for. It's for you. And just to make sure that you are able to become that version of yourself that you maybe like the most, that you're you're able to pour into people better by having more energy and feeling good by yourself. You know, it has a really, really good positive knock-on effect as well on the relationships around you, not just yourself. Initially, the first six, eight, 10 weeks, it'll feel like you're going nowhere until you kind of just go, you know, wow, something is changing in me and you start to see it then eventually too. Yeah, whether it's in your clothes or other people give you compliments and say, oh my God, you look great. Did you lose weight? Or you're glowing. Things are literally happening to you and will happen. Good things happen to good people who eat good food. And that's kind of a message that I would say, say to more and more people. I agree fully. Yeah. It's, 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 and it is great. As soon as you do it, other partners, other family members can end up joining on the bandwagon, which is great because, again, it's one of those quotes that I love repeating on this podcast, all right? If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together because that's what my social media is only full of positivity. It's only full of beneficial information. Yeah. And that helps me. I don't have the news, the doom and gloom, and there's very little that I can do about that myself. I put out my positive message, you put out your positive message, and that helps people to stay focused on their health that then, as a result of that, is what we do in our lives. Absolutely. And funny, just to touch on that, that you say that it's, that it's inspired family members too as well. My nephew Luke actually recently hit his, his goal weight as well. You know, and it wasn't, you know, he just went off, did his thing, followed the good recipes, went to the gym and he's now, you know, he's feeling much happier than ever. And I'm sure he won't mind me sharing that. And um, you probably saw one of your videos randomly here and there. But yeah, it's amazing. And even like what we are doing online, you, I'm sure you noticed yourself with people that message me weekly saying, you know, I've lost this amount of weight. I've lost that amount of weight. I'm using a recipe. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for that. It's just, it does, it feeds in so positively. And when you are in a position like you or I are in, it's very important to be responsible with that, you know, level of kind of power, I suppose, on social media too, and be responsible with it overall. Yeah, and that's a great point. Like, we have a message, and most certainly I'm glad it's a positive message, to help people to live healthier lives, right? So every time that you go on live, every time that you post, every time that you share a story or a funny video or more so the, the peace and pout that I also do as well in front of a mirror, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're bringing people's energy levels up because for the most part, there's a high percentage. This, in fact, there's doom and gloom everywhere you look, right? And what, mm-hmm. you, for, or what you're focusing on will massively expand, expand. And the idea is if you surround yourself, we talked about it, and this is probably the key point of this podcast, right? Who you surround yourself, stuff with who you talk with what you consume both the foods and the people what you emotionally talk to and listen to either as a podcast or youtube or social media real tiktok that's going to literally be you are going to become that person absolutely i literally couldn't agree more i agree with absolutely everything you said it's you don't realize how much these things have an effect on you until you are in you know in too far and you're kind of going oh my god i have to change so it's really really important to recognize your relationship with absolutely everything not just people you know with technology with your food with your exercise with your sleep with everything it's really important to analyze and do like a little life audit every now and again as well to just check in on things and make sure that you're still where you want to be would you uh say that you're someone to uh, write down a lot of things and more so a journal like I'm, I, I would be a fan of writing things down because it's visual like being someone who struggles with a lot of words I sometimes even do drawings of work I do relationship with love hearts I do plus whatever that may be but the idea is is that something that you do as well to be honest with you I'm not a huge journaler I'm a big kind of list person day to day and kind of you know what I do I do like to plan um kind of three kind of three months in advance where I'll have a good spreadsheet done of everything that I kind of want to achieve or what I'm doing or events that are coming up but I wouldn't be a huge journaler but I know it's really really beneficial um for a lot of people and it's actually a great place to start as well if you are working through stuff emotionally it's really really good yeah too right and it's the idea even for myself it's visual it gets up stuff up here down a piece of paper that then as a result of that allows more people to go oh yeah that's actually what i want get clear on what you want and kind of walk towards it itself and is there any i suppose message that you would like if you had one thing to pass on to people one message is difficult now to pass on to people that you want them to do religiously and this is your one message 
I think I would like people to realize that they have actually got the power in them to totally change their lives because I've done it myself over the past two years. They have the power within them. It's just relighting that spark and to believe in yourself a little bit and build on it as you go. Don't try and attack everything at once. Take it day by day and bit by bit until you are in a really, really strong position again. Love it. Bite by bite, most certainly. Edgar Kirby, the most certainly healthy influencer based in Dungavan. Let us know your social media platforms so people can most certainly touch base with you if they want to literally check out some of your recipes and or uh, get in touch with you personally. Perfect. So Edgar Kirby, E-D-G-A-R-K-I-R-B-Y, Edgar Kirby on Instagram and TikTok. And of course, nutrition at edgarkirby.com. Yeah, well, like I, I always love having another, I suppose, local water man on this podcast. And I certainly appreciate you giving me your time. And I always end these podcasts by saying, stay tuned, stay classy and keep it organic. <laughs>